Could the remainder of your $10,000 EIDL grant come later this fall? And how do you win an EIDL loan reconsideration fight? This is an EIDL update for today, one of only one EIDL updates. We are combining loan and grant into the second stimulus check and stimulus package update on EIDL. The economic injury disaster loan from the SBA, which has been a hot mess left and right. As always, like and subscribe to this channel and drop your comments below and we may feature them in tomorrow's recording. And please add a bell in the front of this channel every time you ask this host, where is Blaine 66 and when is he coming back? Answer is he's coming back this weekend. <laughs> so get ready. Uh, if you're new to this channel, thanks for joining. It's 10,000 new subscribers a day, and certainly it's a different environment to understand why is a guy sitting there with scarves. So a lot of this may be uh, inside jokes. Please watch our older videos if you don't understand the humor in some of these recordings. EIDL is one of them. Uh, coming up later today, I won't be answering your questions. Rather, what I'm going to do, be doing is going over two items. The likelihood of you ever getting that remainder of that $10,000 EIDL grant and the big one, which is really the winning a reconsideration. And I'll be going over timelines as well. A lot of you have been asking me, when am I getting my money? When am I getting my money? I'm approved. I haven't got my money. So let me go over them right now. First, the remainder of your $10,000 grant, I mean, it's really been a big topic of discussion. One person hit me in one of the comments and said, you don't do enough to get our EIDL grant for me. Uh, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Uh, smack someone with a scarf and say, give them your, give my viewers their grant money? Ultimately, there's three ways you will get your grant money. Uh, and when I mean the $10,000 grant money. One someone wins a court case. And we detailed last week that there's a person who's going to a judicial determination a couple days about the $10,000 grant. I don't know if he's gonna win, I don't know if he's gonna lose. He's self-representative, so self-represented, and he's not an attorney. So we'll see what happens. Uh, second, that Javita Carranza just leaves and she takes Kimberly Butler with her. We all adore Kimberly Butler, don't we? And finally, uh, the third one, which is that Joseph Biden wins. I mean, we really, that is really the only likely outcome of where your $10,000 grant will come from. Why? Because, you know, we have seen all these leaked letters. This channel really sort of started to pop when I started to reveal all these leaked congressional letters asking Javita Carranza to pay you the $10,000 grant. Well, those senators sent letters and then they went on vacation. You know why? I, I think inherently what's going on is that senators don't believe that Javita Carranza will change in her $10,000 grant policy uh, as the administrator of the SBA because she's appointed by a Republican and their pur purpose is not to give a lot of free money. They've been very indicative. Even as today, as the new jobs claims numbers were released, President Trump was talking about how wonderful it, everyone is and how many jobs everyone has, but simply is ignoring that last week there was one million new jobless claims for the 14th consecutive week, the worst in history, and that unemployment rates are now at the consecutive 11% number the longest stretch that number has ever been that low since the Great Depression. So in that environment, without being political, which I'm not, is that there's no reason for Javita Carranza to change her policy about the $10,000 grant. Uh, so if you want to write her 49 emails, which one viewer once did, asking for the remainder of the $10,000 grant, it's not going to get it for you. Next, how do you win a reconsideration? And I've gotten a couple comments about that because a lot of the viewers at this point are either at reconsideration or at waiting for loan money or grant money. So I'm going to do both of you. Uh, if you've done a reconsideration or you're trying to, here's what you need to know. First, uh, the reconsideration has to be on file within 30 days. Two, if you've done it 
hear this video and say, oh, I want to do that too, you can do what I'm about to tell you as well. You can always supplement your reconsideration. No one tells you that. Yeah, if you sent something in, it was one letter, and then you listen to me, you're like, oh, I want to say that as well. You can send the additional stuff I'm about to tell you as well. Uh, third, you need to understand how reconsideration is done, which is so important. We often forget that. So let me go through all the nuances of reconsideration and the denial of an EIDL loan. You're denied for an EID loan for a series of different reasons, and I'm going to go over how you do a reconsideration for each situation. Yeah, I'm just I'm helping you all over the place today. All right, first, denial for bad character, and that doesn't mean you're just a pissy ass person. It means that you have some type of misdemeanor arrest, conviction, or felony arrest or conviction in a certain period of time. They see it, you know you have it. And because of that, they denied your loan. Uh, what you need to do to win the reconsideration is say, here's the case. This is what I did. This is not what I did. And this is why I still qualify for a loan. So you need to put forward everything there. What I would do is if you have any documents from that case, I would give it to the SBA because that will support what you say the case is about. So for example, if you're a loan officer and you're looking at it and you think, I'm going to deny her loan because she's a crook. Well, you were just arrested for smoking some pot in public or drinking in public a beer at the Hamosa, beer, Hamosa Beach Pier. Uh, you know, why should you be denied a loan because you drank in public? It's not the same thing as, you know, you're on uh, a former member of Real Housewives of Atlanta and you, you know, were doing some strange things with cars and fake bank accounts. I mean, those are two different things. So certain people certainly qualify for loans and may have had an arrest or conviction recently, but SBA may not know what it is. And so you have to assume that they just made a mistake. You have to assume that they just don't know what it is. So give them anything you have from that case and say, hey, this is me and this is why I qualify. And you may likely win. It's not one of the hardest ones to win. The easiest one to win is the next one. Unable to verify business existence. I get that all the time. They're like, who are you? I don't know you. <laughs> the Mariah Carey voice. I don't know her. Uh, how do you win that? You confirm who you are. <laughs> and the hardest situation is when your business is, is on your Schedule C. What's happening if it's on a Schedule C that they don't know that that business is really there. They don't know the business exists. So what you're going to have to do is give them the Schedule C. Give them as many Schedule Cs, 2019, 2018, as many as you ha can. That shows on the Schedule C that business name, that, that, that business type. Because you know on Schedule C you have to list the type of business you're doing. So if it says if your accountant it says accountant on the Schedule C, uh, it doesn't say car wash owner. Uh, it actually tees up with the application you schedule with, for, with SBA for EIDL. And so submit that and say here... This is this. Also include um, incorporation documents if you have them. Uh, that would be if you're not a Schedule C, of course. Things that don't work are Facebook accounts, websites, Twitter handles, YouTube handles. Those aren't. I mean, I, you know who I, you know who this channel is, but SBA doesn't consider that existence of a business, unfortunately. So um, you need to have financial documents and formation documents, whether it's corporate. DBA, anything that ex confirms your existence. Receipts. A lot of you were asking me back a few weeks ago, I haven't found my July tax return. Well, guess what? Your July tax return is now due. The federal government is not extending the deadline for the July for the, uh, for the 2019 return. So it's due in July. So get it filed and then give that to SBA. So you can't use that as an excuse anymore. Um, that is one of the easiest ones to win on reconsideration. Next one is... Uh, the next one is the, oh, this is my favorite one, uh, economic injury. The economic injury is less than the grant money you got, but you never got the grant money. I mean, that's, that's pretty well easy to win. Um, but ultimately what they will do, you know, you're going to say, Hey, I didn't get my grant money, but they're going to look at the, uh, the numbers. And the reason why they issue that is probably because the numbers you put on the on the streamlined form, you know that cost of goods sold, the revenue. You know you, you may have put something like a hundred dollars of revenue and 
ten dollars of cost of goods sold and they're like well that's only ninety dollars i'm not giving this guy a loan and they may have a grounds for it so ultimately you have to explain that your numbers were in error that you made a mistake in putting the numbers in error and that you made a lot more money and that will win you that one as well found the last one the hardest one to win is the credit score it's ultimately the credit score, and it's the one I've asked. The, I've been asked to answer the most on this channel. So the credit score, the one the win on reconsideration, is you have to argue the score, and to argue the score. You got to show where the score has been. So remember, um, they use Experian Vantage Score 3.0. So don't rely upon FICO. Don't rely on TransUnion. They're going to say, I don't care what TransUnion is. They want to see Experian. So go to the Experian website, get your credit score from February to the present. And every time there's a hard pull in there, you know, get that evidence. If you can get the credit score up, and you can get it up very quickly. You, you watched our special yesterday of Alan Beamer. You can get credit scores up by getting adverse entries off of there right away by calling Experian on the phone. If you get the credit score up, that's even more grounds to win a reversal. So let's say you had um, a 700 credit score. Uh, SBA <laughs> did six hard polls and your score fell to 600 and they denied you, well, that's easy. You show, hey, this is what you did to me. Um, let's say they only did one hard poll and you fell 10 points, but you had all this other stuff over there and you call Experian, you got a fix because you watch me and then by the time you do the reconsideration, your Experian credit score is up to 750, bam. Uh, the outsiders, who you all asked me to identify, I'm not identifying them. The outsiders in that scandal, which I detailed last a few days ago, they have a leaked correspondence which claims that the lowest point to loan for a EIDL uh, loan, I can't remember the number, but it was something like 570 or 580. You can believe it for whatever it's worth. I, it's clearly not accurate as of a few months ago because we've had viewers of this channel who got loans who are in the low 500s. We've got people who are in the 700s who are, who are denied a loan. So it's all over the place. There you go. That is how you win a reconsideration. Um, you can also have your senators get involved. Viewers of this channel have gotten their senators involved in the reconsideration or representatives or, or, or state assembly people and they have turned low reconsiderations around. When we first announced that, which was, God, what was it, three weeks ago or two weeks ago, to get senators involved in your reconsideration of denials of EID loans, they got a win for their viewers of this channel within 24 hours. No exaggeration. Literally 24 hours, they got a win. So they can do it for you as well. Finally, let's get some, some processing times. Uh, a lot of you have finally gotten approvals or notifications that you're getting things and yet they're not funded, and you're like, where is it? Or you haven't heard anything, and you haven't seen any money, and you're like, where is my money? Well, here's the good news, here's the bad news. The good bad news is the money's not coming yet. The good news is that the outsiders claim that there is a financial backlog at SBA because no money has been routed out since June 10th. So if you are one of those people who are who were approved, let's say, after June 10th, but haven't seen funding, that's the issue. If you're people that you're like June 8th or June 9th, and then you haven't seen the funding, that's also the issue. Uh, you can call SBA, but that's what the outsiders have claimed, that there's a backlog. If you're new to this channel, which you probably are, thank you for the 10,000 new subscribers in the last 24 hours, um, there was a period of time in late April where we all woke up, this channel was just a few days old, and it was literally, bam, all this money showed up in people's bank accounts for EIDL grants. It was a big drop. And that's what SBA does. The outsiders do confirm that as well. I've been reporting that since day one. SBA does do these drops. They don't just, you know, send money here, send money here, send money here. They just, you know, they just throw in a big old bag. And when the bag is ready to go, then they just push send. Uh, that, there's clearly an independent contractor who's doing this for SBA, uh, someone who's routing the money into the bank accounts. And clearly it's perhaps easier just to push it all at the same time, push the money in a direct deposit all at the same time. So please, one, don't close the bank account. <laughs>
make sure that bank account is there. Confirm you have the bank account amount and money correct. Um, last, if you're new to this channel and you have questions about EIDL loans or grants, drop them in the comments below. For those of you who said, I hate to respond to haters, but I'm going to right now, uh, they're, not, they're not inherently haters. Some of them are subscribers, but they just jabbed at me. They're like, when are you going to do EIDL? You haven't done EIDL forever. We did two EIDL videos 48 hours ago. We didn't do one yesterday. We did a, a special, but we did two EIDL videos the day before. So I understand there's a lot of videos we're pushing out per day. Uh, today will be five videos. But don't be coming on and saying we have forgotten about you. Someone also sent me a message that I miss my old EIDL guy. Well, he hasn't gone anywhere either. So don't be acting like, you know, I, I, I have changed my wardrobe and my hairstyle, which I haven't yet. Uh, I am still here for you. I am not leaving any of you. I am here to help you. Uh, Needless to say, the EITL videos are not as well watched as the second stimulus check videos. So the good news about that is that instead of 500 comments on the second stimulus check videos, the EITLs have about 100, which I can certainly answer. 500 in a 15-minute video is really hard to answer. Um, so if you have questions in today's video about EITL, drop them in the comments below. And yes, Blaine will be returning this weekend with a new friend. <laughs> as always, JFLA for more.